live from Soho, New York City. It's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Hi, I'm Becky Stern. With me is Phil. Hello. Phil, what's on today's show? On today's show, the code is lock it. You'll find out the secret very the secret soon. Lies within. <laughs> uh, you can get 10% off anything in the Adafruit store uh, or in the uh, wearables and flora categories until 11:59 p.m. Eastern time tonight using code lock it on checkout. That's right. Component of the week, something new, something old. Something blinky. <laughs> something blinky in the world of wearable electronics. Then, material spotlight. Something cool you may have not heard of before, but you will now. It's material, we put it in the spotlight, we question it. <laughs> Next up, question and answers. You got questions, we got answers, we'll be answering all of them. All that and more on wearable electronics with Becky Stern. Okay. If you have questions throughout the show, you can post them in the comments. We use them for next week's show. So if your question gets featured on today's show, it means you've already asked it, and you've been entered in the giveaway today. That's right. What is the giveaway? What, uh, what are you well, get? I'll let you know when we get to component of the week. Okay. But um, if you have any wearable electronics questions, you can post them in the comments on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, Carrier Pigeon, yeah. and um, we'll answer them. There's been a fantastic set of questions. This is going strong. People are asking really good ones, and they're frequently asked questions too. So then we can send a link to the answer and say, "Hey, we, you know, we we talked about this on the show." Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's yeah. super awesome. All right, first up, Wearable Wednesday. Everything in the world of wearable electronics. Every Wednesday on the Adafruit blog, we have um, the best collection of news, stories, interviews, videos. If it's electronic and you can stick it to a human body, or sometimes our feline friends and and canine friends, um, it's on the blog. It's on the blog. <laughs> so, um, uh, speaking of events, this Friday is Open Hardware Summit. That's right. We're going. I'm speaking about. Can you guess wearable electronics? That's right. And so uh, we'll be up in Boston at MIT, and that'll be a lot of fun. I'll tell you all about it next week when we get back. Yeah, the uh, badge is a e-ink display that you wear. So the the conference itself is a is a wearable electronics <laughs> event. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's the, it's the same e-ink displays that we have in our store. So nice. the e-paper e ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up. So an Element 14 Get Closer Challenge update. If you didn't know, we're doing this really cool challenge with Element 14 where a bunch of, it's eight, eight makers uh, proposed projects to... Um, selected from hundreds. Yes, yeah, selected from 120 entrants to uh, make their own Flora wearables projects, and we give them supplies. And so yeah. they've been blogging their progress on the Element 14 website. And um, I just wanted to share a couple projects that yeah. were updated this week. This is um, Alex's uh, like geocache hat. He's working on his NeoPixel animations, he, and he finally invested in a multimeter. He wrote about how he's really a true geek now that he bought a multimeter because he was having some um, conductive thread shorting issues with his pixels. So. Gotcha. And then there's this video. Um, oh, yeah. So this next. Alex's video. Here's a video of his. I'll just talk over it. Yeah. Um, a video of his um, hat. Oh, that was the starts not in the middle. Okay. Anyway, this is a. Um, What's his name? Ryan's uh, Wake on Shake Navigation Glove, then followed by Alex's New York Nets, NY Pride. Oh, this is um, really cool. Yeah, it looks really good. This so those neat. are two projects, Alex's and Ryan's updates from Element 14. So the, the projects are coming along. And yeah. um, by the end of September, we'll have a winner announced. And it's okay. all great fun. And if you want to follow along, you can also post up in our forums or the Element 14 Arduino community. And yeah. OK. Next up, uh, I noticed you're wearing a very nice locket, and there's these photos of a locket. Um, what's going on with this locket stuff, Becky? Well, I, like I have this flash drive, and it's so ugly, and I hate it, and I don't. I'm always like, ah, oh, I have to remember the flash drive, and it's like I had to make it bigger because it wasn't big enough, but it was too big to put on my keys. So we made a USB locket, and now I want to carry it with me, and oh, wow. uh, it's super cute and expresses my style and goes with all my outfits, and. Um, I think it's a cool way to roll up to what Open Hardware Summit. No, we put our slides on in advance, but but yeah. for other places when you need to bring like files around with you, this is the way to go. And we made a short little silly video about it. Yeah, if you worked for a government organization and you wanted to like borrow some of the powerpoints and talk to a journalist, you could possibly use something like this, you right? Could. Yeah, you, you could. Yeah, you could. Oh. Sure, why not? Roll the video. All right. Over the years, I have had so many USB flash drives, and I used this one to bring my footage home for editing. But I had to add a lanyard to it so that I don't lose it. And for something I carry with me every single day, it doesn't reflect my style at all. Why can't it be more like a fashion accessory, like my cell phone case? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to make this USB locket so you can carry your files in style. 
It's perfect for critical medical records or treasured family photos, top secret offline file sharing, even use it to transfer your important PowerPoint slides. Just surf online for the tiniest drive you can find. We're using this gold-colored 32 gigabyte chiclet from Super Talent. Look for the stated dimensions of the drive or measure it with calipers when it arrives. That way, when you're surfing the myriad lockets on Etsy, you'll have an idea of which ones will fit the drive. Even still, it's not exact. Many of the locket dimensions given are overall size and don't specify the depth of the cavity. So we suggest buying multiple lockets to increase your chances of success. These ones were only a dollar a piece. Connect the flash drive to the locket with a chain and jump ring. Adafruit pliers come in handy for this, and voila, our simplest wearables project to date. Now, because it's a piece of jewelry, I want to wear it everywhere. Subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube, and don't miss our weekly live show about wearable electronics with me, Becky Stern. Okay, that was great. That's, that's today's wearable project. Yeah, I like this project because it takes stuff that you have available, and it's a very easy project. Sometimes the wearable projects, if you just start off with, I'm going to make LED shoes, or I'm going to make a, a, you know, something with 50 um, things sewn into it, um, you might not have time, or you're, you might say, I'm not ready for that yet. So this is a really good one just to like hack and mod, yeah. find things that something fits in. Um, I mean, it's a good, like the, I think the process we use, to, to, because it's a very simple project, but like the idea that you use calipers to measure things, to figure out if they're going to yeah. fit, like is a cool takeaway from this video, and also like, it's a really, it's really useful, which is some, you know, critical feedback sometimes I get about my fun blinky LED like scarves. It's like, is it useful, Becky? Well, guess what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, useful it's, and expressive. Yeah, it's it's almost like saying, you know, is a color changing scarf useful? Well, of course not. And, and it's debatable if scarves are even useful half the time. You know, they're sometimes they're just fashion. Arm. They're just fashion accessories. Yeah. You know, so so a little bit of useful mixed with a little bit of fashion yeah, accessory, and so it's too. fun. I mean, make one. Yeah. All right. It's good back to school project, speaking of which. Because you need USB drives at school because you need to bring your you files do. around. All right, moving right along. The component of the week. week this week is the Flora GPS module. I love this thing so much. It's one of the first, it is the first sensor we put out with the, um, in the Flora family. And it's yeah. so cute and small and round. And we just found out that it's exactly the right size to fit inside the NeoPixel ring. So that's fantastic, and yeah. it's like it's I'd like to small. say we designed it that way. It was In fact, I'm going to say we because I would like to say it. So I'm going to say it. we designed say it, it that way. <laughs> I just like saying we designed everything <laughs> well in advance forever, and it always works out perfectly. So perfectly, it fits so perfect. So, um, so as we previewed last week, Tyler Cooper and I are working on a. Uh, a project, yeah. a secret project with the GPS unit. Um, but it's really cool. It communicates directly with satellites. So like you have it on your jacket, it's talking to space. It doesn't talk on the cell network or anything, but it's, yeah. um, uh, you can use it and it has built in data logging. So um, we have a little overview video we want to show you first and then we'll talk about some of the projects you can make with it. Okay. Ever think your code could guide you home? The easiest way to add location information to your wearable electronics project is the Flora GPS. This easy to sew round PCB houses the Adafruit Ultimate GPS module with built-in data logging for mapping your dog walk or jog to the park. It connects to the Flora main board easily with our premium stainless steel thread. You can use the GPS as a real-time clock by adding a coin cell battery, which also helps it fix on a location faster when you power it up. The Flora GPS can track up to 22 satellites and can get location updates 10 times a second. You can either attach an external antenna or use the one it's got inside. To get you started, try our GPS jacket project. The complete tutorial will walk you through creating your own location-aware outerwear and hopefully inspire your own Flora GPS project, which we hope you'll share with us in our weekly show and tell on Google+. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube. OK, and we're back. Super fun. Yeah. So the GPS is great. Here are some projects you can make with it. You can hook it up with Flora. Here's what it looks like when you first um, want to test it out and make sure it's working. And then you can stick it out the window. Though we have a tutorial for getting set up with the, um, with the GPS unit that shows you how to like, hook it all up. And then you have to dangle it out the window or, you or, know, go, outside. It, or, go, out, or go outside, <laughs> heaven yeah. forbid, um, and, um, to get a GPS fix. And yeah. then, um, as you saw in the video, we have yeah. a GPS jacket project that. That's my jacket. Yeah, it's your jacket that can let you know when you get close to a place. And we made another iteration of that. Um, for this um, hardwired video with iJustine, that AOL series that they're doing. Yeah, that on, we'll show that video to you guys On AOL.com right now, I saw Justine with 
wearing this stuff. This cool. photo, actually. Yeah. This photo by John Janeer yeah. of Justine wearing all the things. And we made her a GPS jacket that's like similar to yours, Phil, but you see how it has like a rosette on the lapel. Oh, yeah. um, and it's... it like spirals, and it spirals faster. The animation spirals faster the um, closer you get to your destination. Yeah, I'll zoom in on this a little bit so folks can see it. So there's the animation. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and it has like yellow in the middle because it's a flower. But she was wearing, she was here to do a video shoot about all wearables, so of course she's wearing all of the things. Yeah. Next <laughs> up. Our city bike helmet, here, shown here, covered in uh, never wet hydrophobic coating and being sprayed down with a hose. Um, the city bike helmet uses the GPS in conjunction with the Flora accelerometer and compass module to get uh, location and heading and guide you to yeah. the nearest bike station. And then you've got, um, this is the pack. The GPS starter pack for Flora. It was the first pack we made with Flora, and it's. Um, everything you need to make a GPS tracking project with Flora. Yeah, and if you want that, don't forget the code is LOCKIT. You can get 10% off that pack right everything now. Everything in the Flora and wearables category is 10% off until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time tonight with code LOCKIT. All right, now it all makes sense, the code LOCKIT. It all makes sense now. All right. It all makes sense. Is there keynotes or PowerPoints on there? Or what, do you, what, do you, what do you have on there? Um, I. I, I'm kind of like platform agnostic, and I don't like yeah. when they bundle up your thing. So what I yeah. usually do for presentations is a folder of pictures that are in the right order, yeah. and then um, Finder full screen, yeah. or preview full screen slideshow mode, and then next, next, next. Um, if that's if I'm presenting on a Windows machine, I'll just make a PDF. Gotcha. All right. Because I don't have PowerPoint or Keynote. Next up, Material Spotlight. The material I chose to share with you today is bare conductive paint, and it's because we got a uh, question about it that we're answering today, so I want to talk to you about it. It's a really cool, non-toxic conductive paint, and I, th I think it's originally called bare conductive because the early, like before they turned into a real company company and they were just developing a formula, they wanted something that was water-based and you could, could put on your skin, and they had these videos of like, you know, human performative synthesizers where like you have paint on you and then you touch uh, yeah. another dancer and it uh, like m carries the sound through all of the dancers. Um, but I think when they were transitioning to um, release, to product release, um, they were encouraged to not, uh, not call it an official use to put it on skin just because it's a huge liability yeah. concern. Um, but it is water-based, which means it's like, it's pretty safe for kids to work with because it's non-toxic and, um, yeah. but that also means that it's, it's like tempera paint, so if you, um, we'll answer a question about it later, but it is not suitable for use on fabric. It's a paper thing, or paper or walls, or solid surfaces only, because yeah. it's not flexible. It dries um, like tempera paint, so kind of brittle, but it's, um, it's very conductive. It's black, which we love, and um, it's fun to work with, and um, we have a video about Great. that, too. Let's go to the video. Welcome to Wearable Wednesday, everybody. Today I wanted to quickly check in and tell you about uh, the new bare conductive paint pens we are carrying at Adafruit. We're also carrying the pot of paint as well as the bare conductive robot greeting card. It's really cool. It has a little circuit already drawn on it for you. It comes with the battery and a blinking LED and the paint pen. And then when you close the switch, you get a nice little blinking robot. So this stuff is really fun for kids to play with. It's water soluble and skin safe, which means it's uh, not bad to uh, touch with your fingers and um, you can have a lot of fun with it. I've already been playing in my sketchbook. I made a series circuit and a parallel circuit and I also uh, drew this um, paper version of my uh, plush game controller which I'll show you how to make next week and um, I use it with the capacitive touch sensing library and Flora's onboard keyboard capabilities to use it as a game controller for some emulators online. Let me try my hand at some Pac-Man. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so that's a lot of fun, and I hope that you also have a lot of fun with the Bear Conductive product, and I'll see you on another Wearable Wednesday. All righty. Cool stuff. It's super fun. We have it in a paint pen and also in a pot, a little container, um, if you want more for like a workshop or you yeah. want to use paintbrushes. It's really fun and easy. I like it a lot. It's All really right. fun to play with. It is time for questions and answers. You've got questions. We've got answers. Yeah. It used to be the old Radio Shack slogan. Really? you got questions, we got answers. I maybe vaguely remember that from yeah. like short circuit movie era. Yeah, Radio Shack, they, that was their thing. You'd go in and you'd ask them advice about all sorts of things. Oh, no. Unclear if, if that is still what you want to do if you go to Radio Shack. So uh, there's lots of debate about that. 
Um, I do like that they're um, getting um, Arduino compatible stuff in yeah. their stores. And uh, we have a couple of things through Make and also an Arduino with the Adafruit logo on the back of Little Micro. Um, so if you had questions and it could be solved with one of those things, they'd have an answer. They'd have an answer. Yeah. I, I remember when they first started carrying the Arduino stuff at Radio Shack and I lived um, on like a pretty heavily Puerto Rican and Dominican street. and. Um, the Radio Shack, I went into the Radio Shack to go to see, because they were selling radio, Maker Fair tickets, and yeah. I wanted to go um, check on them and make sure they understood how to use their binder. And um, there was a huge like Arduino display, and it was entirely in Spanish. And it oh, said, like, cool. you can create anything called an Arduino. And it was, like, it was oh, really nice. Uh, I was I Instagrammed yeah. it, or one, wasn't out yet. Yeah, one of the cool things uh, I read is there's a, like, a Radio Shack within most people in the US, yeah. within like two or three miles. It's like one of the few stores that there's always someone there. So we'll see. I mean, this is cool that this is available. I'd like to see them well, start carrying wearable. wearable I know cars. it could be cool. You know, like the and, and uh, as I went to college here in New York City, and I uh, teach a class at a School of Visual Arts here in New York City, and so like I'm like really intimately aware about how hard it is to find like. The, Oh, I fried my Arduino yeah. at eleven o'clock at night. Well, eight eight o'clock they close at eight thirty. Yeah. Like you can't, you could never just go down to the radio shack and get anything except for like resistors and LEDs. And yeah. and so now it's cool that you can pick up an Arduino and some other things um, yeah. that I consider like more hardcore makery stuff at Radio Shack for for students who need to to quickly stop by a place and they don't have time to wait for shipping or whatever. Yeah. Okay, on to the questions. Oh yeah, questions. So here, what we're we here go. to do the first one. How many are speaking of? Set you up for this. How many Arduino projects have you done over your career, Becky Stern? I did research for you, th Mr. Three Left Turns. I went to my website and I counted all of the Arduino projects that I had published blog posts about, which yeah. and it was 26. So okay. that means I've probably done about 50. Gotcha. But that would be 26 like official videos or tutorial projects with Arduino. I think between Hackaday and Make, because I remember looking at the Arduino category when it was just me as a writer on this. Mm -hmm. I probably, I definitely wrote about all 26 of yours. Yep, definitely. But I think, I think it, but before I retired, I think it was up to like five or 6,000 in that category. Yeah. Of just Arduino stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for so sure. So there's a lot. But this I know, yeah, I mean, that's how I know you. That's know how many your, like your official, Arduino really projects. good Arduino projects I've done. Yeah, we all have, we have a lot, we all have a lot of Arduino. Uh, it's survivor biased. You only see the survivor Arduino projects. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up. Can a floor drive the ID 1480 2.2 TFT display? It can, technically, with a little caveat that the um, three of the pins that you need are only available on the Flora in the um, the in-circuit programming, uh, what to call it, pads in the middle of the board. They're not like on the edge like the rest of the That's sewing pads. So you'd have to like use both, Go solder work. wires to that connector and then also use the um, pads. But yeah, it's uh, technically possible. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just an Arduino. So, yeah, it's an Arduino, you know, it's really similar to the Arduino yeah, Micro. It's a 32 for um, microcontroller, and we make all the pins yeah. available, but we try to make the most commonly used pins around the edges there. Okay, I'd love to know if the bare paint on clothing, hey, we are just talking about that, could be used as conductive stitching. Has it been known if the floor will get really hot on clothing? Floor doesn't get hot on clothing. It's totally cool. Um, I think I, yeah, no, that's the reason I picked this, because of his question. Yeah. He picked it as the, as the uh, material spotlight. No, you can't use bare conductive on fabric. It's a bad idea, because as soon as it, if it dries, as soon as it bends, it cracks. It's not yeah. like a, um, like an, a, a flexible uh, adhesive or silicone caulk or anything. Like, it's, yeah. it's water-based paint, so it's straight up. Like, if you, if you wanted to make something very temporary, you could, like, yeah. uh, especially with capacitive touch sensing, which doesn't require, like, super, like you can't use it to deliver power for definitely, yeah. but you can make sensors on it, but then it washes off. So if you wanted to have like a kid's birthday party where you all put paint on each other's like mm. smocks and then touch paper each other. Paper hats to or something like yeah, that. Paper yeah, paper hats, um, then sure, but it's n definitely not suitable for like su substituting for conductive thread in any by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. Next up, show question. Flora and its pedals, <laughs> pedals. I mean, you don't call them that. Maybe we should. No, it's cute. Uh, accessories module, a great wearable technology. However, I have a large share of LEDs, resistor components, Arduino, etc. in my stash box. Can I use non flora sobel LEDs, for example, with the Flora, or can I use Flora pedals, accessory module with non flora Arduino, like Uno or LilyPad? So basically, yes and what, yes. yeah, basically, what can you use with what? Everything with everything. Um, if you look at our, because uh, I mean, when I started doing wearables, there wasn't anything that was made specifically to be sewn, so it yeah. was all just regular components. And I've made probably like 
six or seven now tutorials about sewing regular through hole LEDs onto clothing. And you spiral the leads one square and one round so you can tell the difference between positive yeah. and negative. And then you just sew through it with conductive thread. So um, on the learning system, if you go to the LED sewing kit or the um, what you call it, twinkle, sparkle, hair bow tutorial, you'll see instructions for a tutorial for sewing with plain LEDs. Mm. But also like the battery holders we use, they're designed to be soldered onto a board. They just happen to be sewable because they have a flat pad with a hole in it. Um, so yeah, you can use capacitors, resistors, LEDs. In fact, if you look at an old project I did, um, a big embroidery has like decorative, the resistors leads are twirled decoratively and then sewn in. So yes. Yeah. Um, and then if you, you can use, um, what was the other half of that question? Can was you like, use um, any of the, the floor accessories with other types of Arduinos, yeah. Unos, lily yeah. pads? So in fact, a lot of our flora, all of them actually, the flora sensors, what you're calling pedals, which is pretty cute, um, are sensor breakouts that we have available in a more standard package also. So, yeah. um, but yes, like alligator clips or um, sew it in and then plug it in with wires. Like, yeah, you can hook up like our sewable GPS module like to a regular Arduino board. That's yeah. all the same hardware. The floor accessories are just designed round and easy to sew yeah. or clip with alligator clips. Yeah, the, I think the older lily pad won't support some of the newer things like a GPS sure. or the NeoPixels? Well, the new... Um, the, the, new, new the new one does. The new one doesn't have the new LilyPad 32U4, which is like, you know, s similar in its components to the Flora. Um, you can use our i squared c sensors with it. I tried those, the, yeah. the color sensor, the accelerometer, and the light sensor. But it doesn't have the right, um, it doesn't have serial TX and RX broken out to a um, connection on the outside of the board, which the GPS needs. Yeah. So you can't use a GPS with the the Lily, the new lily pad, but um, the other I squared C sensors work, and then all other Arduino boards that have the pins. Yeah, yeah they're all. Luckily, like everything kind of works. It all also depends on motivated you are to get sure. these things. Well, and the libraries are all the same. So like we have one GPS library for yeah. this GPS and the the other package of Ultimate GPS we sell. So yeah, yeah. you can mix and match, and um, it's not like you have to throw away your bin of goodies just because you want to make a wearables yeah. project. They all kind That's of That's the best together. thing about electronics now is especially things that are based around the Arduino ecosystem is everything, you can get it to work together. Yeah. I mean, for LEDs, like our NeoPixels are really cool because they're like chainable and addressable. So you can make, um, you know, a, like a l large multicolor thing with less effort. If you want to use plain LEDs, you're limited to like just turning off one or the other or um, using a shift register or something. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Hi, Becky. A question for next week's show. I would love to know how long the conductive fabric test strip you showed has been exposed to air, as I'm starting a project that will use a lot of conductive fabric and likely be a long-term build. It would be a bummer if it tarnished before I completed it. And do you think storing the pieces of my project in airtight containers will curb the tarnishing? Yeah, I got you out a sample on the overhead okay, to show you. to the overhead. Yeah, because you asked about this. See, this is why it's good we asked the questions a week in advance, because I could get this demo yeah. for you, whereas if you asked it live, I wouldn't, it would have been okay. over at my desk. So this is, um, she was asking about this sample of conductive fabric on regular fabric that I made to test out some different samples we were getting, and I've left it out now for, um, I'm going to guess, like six months. Okay. It's been in my like non-airtight bin of conductive fabric, and, and on the overhead it's not coming across, but each one of these samples is a little bit tarnished. But when I go to look at the, I was sensing it with the multimeter, they're only mildly less resistive than they were um, to begin with. So like usually it's like 80 ohms over like four inches, and this is like, yeah. this one, come on. Come okay, on that's guy. not too bad at yeah, all. Yeah, anyway, this, they're, doing, they're doing okay. So um, maybe not. They were earlier. Oh, I'm on the wrong mode on my multimeter. That could be a thing, shouldn't it? So yeah, like we're getting like it's it's reduced by like three quarters the conduct the conductivity um, over six months of being exposed to pretty much just air. So um, if you're doing a long-term build with conductive fabric, I would um, I would advise you keep your project in an airtight container while you're working on it. Ziploc bag, slurp all the air out with a straw, okay. um, and that will dramatically. Um, improve the life of the silver conductive fabric. The other thing you can do is um, jewelry supply catalogs or websites will sell um, uh, a material uh, or like a little paper material made by 3M that's like a tarnish. You put it in your jewelry box and it's supposed to prevent your jewelry from tarnishing and what it does is it like um, reacts with the air to try to, um, to take away the things that would react with the silver. Yeah. So you can get some of those and put that in the bag with your project. Um, but eventually you have to understand that it will tarnish and it'll be sad. Okay. 
But if you're using your connective fabric for capacitive touch sensors, I think you might just have to adjust the sensitivity of your code uh, eventually. Like, I, I think that's how it will go, and then eventually maybe it won't work, but it should gracefully fail that way. Question from David. Will conductive cloth be available in other colors? I mean, it is available in other colors, I, I guess, places, maybe, but it's yeah. dyed and it's not, um, and like anywhere where there's dye, like dye will only stick to a fiber, right? And stainless steel is not technically a, a yeah. fiber. So anything that's going to take a colored dye is not conductive. It's either wool or cotton or nylon. And so your colored conductive fabric by nature has to be less conductive than a non-colored conductive fabric. Mm. Um, we haven't been investigating any more aesthetic. We like the shiny space age uh, color of conductive okay. fabric. So All right. stick with silver for now. But if you're using it for capacitive touch sensing, you can put another layer of fabric over top of it. Last up. Idea for a practical wearable. Runners often want regular and instant feedback on their pace without having to constantly check it with an app on their smartphone. The wearable would be something like a wrist strap with Bluetooth and indicator LEDs, perhaps yellow for slow, green for good pace, and red for too fast. If such a wearable existed, it would be easy to create an app that would send it pace data. What do you think of that? Cool. It's not a question, but I put it in anyway because it's a cool <laughs> yeah. idea. Um, like I told you about that thing that Tyler and I are working on with the NeoPixel ring and the GPS. Yeah. Um, it's also got a, a flora and a, the accelerometer board on it. And so, I mean, I don't want to leave the cat out of the bag, but like it can be a watch. It can also be a navigation tool, and it can also be a pacekeeper for athletic activities. Just, just yeah. put it on your your thing or whatever, and it doesn't even have to pair with your phone to get pace data. You can have it. You can use the accelerometer. Um, you could put it on your shoe even, and and detect pace data that way. So like the GPS combined with the accelerometer could probably because um, most don't most runners use like a metronome thing? Like it just like counts the frequency of the steps? Um, well, it depends. Right now, one of the big things is having it on your phone. Mm -hmm. So it uses so the like GPS. GPS. Yeah, it uses the GPS for, <coughs> for oh, most things. Me. So with the combination of the GPS and this thing, we're thinking that, and because Tyler's a runner too, we're yeah. thinking that we can make an athletic um, tracker like spin to it. And it doesn't have to pair with your phone because it has GPS right on it. Yeah. You only use it when you're outside. I think the next round of like <coughs> wearables might be things that as you're hitting your zone, you may want to let other people know. So like people who like run together where you can glance over and everyone is green. I like this idea where there's more information than just like a pace or something like that. A million years ago, and this is somewhat related, sort of, um, I made a dog pedometer mm -hmm. and I actually pitched it to a giant dog food company. It looks like it was almost going to happen, but things in this world change very fast. And one of the reasons that this was something that was helpful is one of their business challenges was their food is, was always put in the back of those big pet stores and when people would walk in with their dogs it was always a drag to have to take it to the kind of the, the bad section yeah you know like the, the the super expensive food is in the front so what we thought was we could say oh you know you want to walk your dog as far as you can so the the little um, prototype would glow green based on the dog breed if you walked your dog enough yellow not enough and red fido didn't get enough exercise Aww. today and uh, it also helps the person yeah, too, because, it does. Yeah. Well, and I I made a GPS um, dog collar project a while back before Flora came out. I think I should do a revamp yeah. now that Flora's out. But um, it would look very similar to the circuit Tyler yeah. and I are making with the NeoPixel ring. But I'm very curious about um, like how much more exercise she gets than I do at the at the park. When I let the dog off leash and I go for like a giant hike yeah. through the woods, she's running back and forth and back and forth. And I I want to make a GPS, and I will. It's well, I haven't I already. I have this like six of these at my desk um, on the dog with the data logging, and yeah. I track my walk on my phone with a like you know map my walk app, yeah. and so and it loads a map, and then it also lets you load other coordinates in the map. I can mash up the maps, and I want to yeah. see how much further she walks, or how much squigglier her line is than mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so because cool that, I know if I walk seven miles, she's probably walked at least nine. Yeah, cause it's walking around. Yeah. Excellent. This is what you can do with wearable electronics. You start to look at the world in a different way because you can put. Right. And I'm not, I'm never going to, I'm always looking for wearables that aren't, that you can't make with an app, right? Because there's yeah. so much stuff that you could just do with an app. Like you said. You might as well um, just get a phone. I know. Like you said, you don't want to be looking at your phone all the time while you're running, and that's yeah. a reason to make a new thing. Um, in this case, it would augment my phone because yeah. you could stick it on the dog and then compare the two. Okay. Last up before we do the giveaway, code is lock it. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store in the wearables and floors category expires at 11.59. Tonight, get on that locket. Lock so you can get lock your it. supplies for. Well, you can get your pliers for your locket because we have, we have pliers. You can do that, yeah. And then you can get um, you can yeah. get a GPS. What unit. is the giveaway? What are you giving oh, away? Oh, that's I'm giving away a GPS unit. Okay. Flora GPS. 
All right, here's the... We'll work with any of your standard Arduinos. If you asked a question... If you asked a question that was answered ahead. today, your name is in the spin. And the winner is... Lance Seedman. All right, Lance. He asked the question about the bare conductive paint. Thank you for inspiring our material spotlight segment this week, Lance. And I'll reach out to you uh, privately. And you can also send a note to support at adafruit.com to claim your Flora GPS unit. Congratulations. OK. That's Wearable Electronics, another week. If you guys have questions and you want to win a giveaway, post them in the comments below or on Google Plus or Twitter. Someone asked if there's a best way. There is no best way. I will check all of the places. Yeah. And um, Anyway is the best way. Anyway is the best way. Just ask your questions. And uh, I'd like to see you next week on another episode of Wearable Electronics with me, Becky Stern. Yeah, we got to start doing like, wear it. Wear I don't know. I don't know. Wear it. No. <laughs> All right, I'm we'll bad work. at the we'll, we'll, Girl we'll, Scouts was this. We'll, we'll, we'll work on this. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, wearable Electronics. Okay. I, bye, everybody. Oh, bye. <laughs>